All of the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in key words. For this segment, we're joined by Adam. Good morning. Hello, Lena. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Are you sure? Not tired? Yeah, it's a bit cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to address the heat and the steaminess of summer. I know, but yeah. it's, it's not that bad outside this morning. But, uh, That's a fair point. Yeah, could, 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 could we shut off the AC no, in Adam's studio? No, 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 studio? don't do that. Because then it'll get hot and then <laughs> and I'll complain stuffy. that it's hot. And stuffy, and then I'll we can't cool. win with you, can uh, we? I know there's no middle ground, unfortunately. <laughs> Good morning to <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, I did a whole bit on how golf is so incredibly popular in South yeah. Korea, especially night golf. Night golf, yes, yeah. especially in this climate, yeah, definitely. Yeah, something what? that you've been enjoying. Uh, not so much night golf recently, though. Really? Yeah, I don't daytime? like the, daytime usually because at night golf in this weather, the mosquitoes. Oh, my yeah. God! I mean, yeah. I conveniently crazy. left that part out. <laughs> <laughs> if you are prone to getting bitten by the mosquitoes, nighttime yeah. is probably not the best. Yeah. Anyhow, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Let's jump into our keyword news portion. As always, we're going to hopefully try to clarify some of these head scratchers this morning. Major headlines, starting with our first pick of the day. Cashback. So more payout relief, but in what scale and to whom? The government and the ruling party are looking to provide more cash incentives to encourage spending. What's the latest? Yeah, they're trying to find some middle ground. The Democratic Party wants to include special cashback rewards for credit card spending in the upcoming extra budget. Uh, the DP also wants a universal relief fund, whereas the government wants such funds to be given out selectively. They're taking into consideration national debt and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, reports suggest the two sides are currently working out some middle ground. Mm. Uh, one possibility is giving the cashback rewards to everyone in the low to middle income bracket, excluding the wealthy. Uh, also, the DP is reportedly willing to step back on its universal relief fund proposal to create leeway for the cashback scheme. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two sides have reportedly reached a tentative agreement on increasing the proposed cashback uh, from 300,000 won to 500,000 won with those uh, leeways that I mentioned uh, in place. Uh, the government and the Democratic Party will reportedly iron out the final details sometime this week. Uh, so it's been a bit of a balancing act between them. Uh, we Obviously, the opposition party will be opposed to pretty much anything that comes out uh, <laughs> between the government and the DP. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll have to see what they say about it. Uh, but the opposition party li- lately, uh, in regards to these relief funds, right. have been kind of in line with the government and the DP uh, and I think there are different angles to consider as to what incentivizes them to be more agreeable. Um, I think upcoming important elections has a lot mm. to do with the tone in which they set and that the, yeah. well, I mean, they want to be in the good graces of the public. And if yeah. this is in favor, they have to also acknowledge that. Yeah, well... <laughs> The One opposi- angle. Yeah, the opposition party has been enjoying actually a bit more popularity recently, especially in the by-election. So I think they have a bit more, uh, a bit more power to opinionate their opposition or or support. But uh, who knows? carefully, because that's also yeah. way for thin ice. If you think about yeah. the conditions in which why suddenly the tides changed to be mm. in support of the opposition party, I think it's it was because it was a review of the Moon administration, don't you think? Yeah, it certainly was. Well, uh, anyway. So. Yeah, they'll be kind of latching on to their popularity and we'll have to see what they say. But anyway, cash back for credit card spending. I mean, what can go wrong? (laughs) You mentioned national debt, didn't you? (laughs) Yeah, but the country did get more taxes. Uh, So the finance ministry wants those increased tax revenues to go toward the national debt. Mm. Uh, There's people, that's why it's a bit of a, a bit of a a in limbo at the moment, uh, because some people want it for national debt. Some people want it for this relief fund. uh, Mm. It's a balancing act. All right. On to our second keyword of the day. Sanctions extended. The Biden administration has announced that it is extending an executive order declaring a national emergency over the nuclear threat from North Korea. I mean, this is at a time where the U.S. wants to also restart dialogue with North Korea. What's the latest? Yeah, the timing is certainly interesting. Uh, Biden noted North Korea's pursuit of nuclear missile programs and its other provocative and destabilizing actions continue to pose a threat to U.S. national security. Now, the executive order in question is almost a decade old. Uh, National emergencies regarding North 
North Korea were previously declared by the Trump, Obama and Bush administration. Mm. So that's three previous administrations. Um, so it's pretty much routine at the moment. Mm. Uh, Washington's new point map for North Korea, Sung Kim, said the U.S. hopes for a positive response from North Korea to its offers of talks. So they're extending this executive order, but then they're still uh, wanting the North to come back to the negotiating table. Mm. Uh, but the extension of the executive order, which is pretty routine, as I said, could threaten efforts to resume uh, the dialogue. Because the North wants these sanctions lifted to mm. come back just to the table to discuss right. if there is a middle ground. Yeah. Well, we should note that these are right. not an extension necessarily of the sanctions themselves, mm. but just an executive order saying that North Korea is a threat to the US, which is why... They need the sanctions, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I do. But I mean, it is to be differentiated. Is that what yeah, you're trying to say? Right. Yeah. Uh, the move may also mean that Biden is unwilling to budge on sanctions as well against mm-hmm. the regime, something that was actually re- recently reported to be a possible option to try to get the North back to talks. It's mm-hmm. been uh, reported in the South Korean uh, media uh, a lot. But if with this extension, uh, who knows? I, I don't think Biden is willing to lift any of those sanctions yet. All right, I'll leave it there for now. On to our third keyword of the day. Show of solidarity. Meanwhile, North Korea is reaffirming its alliance with China as a U.S. express hope for holding talks with Pyongyang. What did the allies have to say in this case? Yeah, it was a bit of a, a rare kind of communique, if you will, or a statement. Mm. Uh, the ambassadors of North Korea and China released articles on the respective flagship newspapers of the two countries, emphasizing their unshakable friendship, as they called it. Uh, China's ambassador to North Korea, Lee Jun-jun, also wrote that both countries have emerged from suffering and know the value of peace and therefore they vow to make a positive contribution to regional peace and stability development and prosperity as well Uh, the united front comes after pyongyang appeared to break its silence on its impasse with washington Uh, at a key party meeting last week if you remember north korean leader kim jong-un said the country should prepare for both dialogue and confrontation but especially confrontation with the Biden administration Uh, what to say these rare contributions to these newspapers uh, are to push the Biden administration into providing a clearer uh, and sincere plan for restarting dialogue. Mm-hmm. And North Korea also seems to be using the chance to tell the U.S. it's not going to distance itself from China. So they're saying they've got a pretty powerful friend by them. So you better get your act together, is basically what they're saying. But to be fair, the U.S. has also said, look at all our allies, too. And <laughs> right. We have a united front <laughs> yeah. uh, with our agenda. Yeah. All right. On to our fourth keyword of the day. Spectators allowed. Now turning to the Tokyo Olympics. The organizers for the Summer Games have decided to allow spectators, uh, albeit in a limited capacity. Mm. But this is all despite warnings from health experts that say it might be a better choice to do without any spectators. Yeah, so these Olympic organizers, they're pretty adamant, aren't they, in trying to get this uh, Olympic Games underway. Uh, And so Tokyo organizers say attendance would be capped at up to 50% of a venue's capacity or a maximum of 10,000 people. Mm. Uh, A decision on spectators at the Paralympics will be delayed, however, until July 16th. That's a week before the Olympics open. Uh, Japanese media reports said as many as 20,000 people could attend the Olympic opening ceremony at the main stadium, uh, but organizers said the number would not be that high. Uh, A government official said they would leave open the option of holding events without spectators if infections worsen uh, before and during the Games and if there's any need for more states of emergencies. Uh, Spectators will be asked to wear masks to travel directly to venues and to return home as soon as events have finished. Mm -hmm. Uh, The decision actually contradicts the country's top medical advisor, this uh, Dr. Shigeru Omi, who Mm -hmm. recommended last week that the safest way to hold the Olympics would be without fans. And Mm -hmm. he also previously called it abnormal to hold the Olympics during the pandemic. So even the the organizers are going against their own government medical advisors and... um, Mm -hmm. and, um, obviously public opinion as well. That's right. I mean, but to provide the full context of the story, I mean, they are inoculating more people, up to one million people a day. So they mm. have ramped up the inoculation process mm. in Japan and lifted that state of emergency. However, I think it does go against the general mm. consensus of it doesn't sound safe. Yeah, and that number as well, 50% of a, a yeah. venue, 10,000 people. I mean, that is pretty much one seat apart from the person right. next to you and right. uh, for me that still seems a bit too close and a especially bit dangerous the pandemic. especially yeah with a resurgence as well all right speaking of resurgence and those variants let's talk about one here's our fifth keyword of the day 
Delta variant. The concerns over the spread of the Delta variant particularly are mounting with some countries bringing back travel restrictions, canceling their plans to lift the social distancing rules. What's mm. the latest? Well, let's start off in China. Authorities there are scrambling to vaccinate the entire population amid resurgent COVID-19 outbreaks. The Delta variant appears to be the dominant strain, especially in the south of the country. Uh, over 700 flights have been cancelled in Guangdong and mass testing has begun in Shenzhen. Uh, Europe is also on high alert. Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi said the Euro 2020 uh, football final uh, should actually be moved from Wembley Stadium in London to Rome, of course, because in the UK, that's where the Delta variant is uh, very dominant at the moment. Also, Russia's St. Petersburg, where some matches are taking place also, uh, has also imposed fresh restrictions. City officials announced a ban on food sales in the Euro fan zone and the closure of food courts in shopping centres. Uh, the WHO has described this Delta variant as the fastest and fittest coronavirus strain that will, quote, pick off the most vulnerable people, especially in places with low vaccination rates. Uh, this Dr. Mike Ryan that we've been hearing a lot about, he's the executive director of the WHO's health emergencies program. He said the variant has the potential to be more lethal because it's more efficient in the way it transmits between humans. Mm. Um, EU leaders have been meeting to discuss how to slow the spread of the Delta variant. They've been meeting since a, a couple of days ago. Those talks are ongoing at the moment. We'll have to see what kind of policies and announcements they make. The thing is, the message is clear. I mean, we're not close to being out of the woods with mm. this pandemic, especially with vaccinating the gross majority of the global population, mm. right? I mean, I think that's something to address too. That's right. There's been a lot of headlines over increasing vaccination rates here in Korea as well. I think, yeah, I mean, I work in the media, so... <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I'll, I'll call out a problem when there is one, but uh, media reports they're focusing too much on the vaccinations at the moment. Vaccination rates, right? Vaccination rates as well, and they're picking up pace and here in Korea as well. But uh, we should realize that there is still a pandemic going on. It's right. not all good news and resurgence are happening. Exactly. And to be fair, for a balanced perspective, we're supposed to look at all of that spectrum, aren't yeah. we? And media literacy is so important mm. today because don't be swayed so much yeah. by even what the reporters have to say. Exactly. On to our last keyword of the day. Tech Transfer Hub. Now, here's an important point to address. The WHO is setting up a hub in South Africa to give companies from poor and middle-income countries the know-how and license to produce COVID-19 mm. vaccines. What's the latest? Yeah, so it's basically they're trying to get become a, a vaccine hub, something that Korea is aiming to be at the moment, uh, but South Africa, rather, mm -hmm. appears to be uh, stepping closer to mm -hmm. that goal. The WHO says the Tech Transfer Hub, as it's calling it, could make it possible for African companies to begin manufacturing the popular mRNA vaccines in as little as 9 to 12 months. Uh, the consortium involves Afrogen Biologics and Vaccines, which will act as the hub both by manufacturing these mRNA vaccines itself and by providing training to a manufacturer uh, known as BioVac. Uh, there is yet no deal with uh, the top mRNA vaccine manufacturers such as Pfizer and Moderna, uh, but the WHO hopes they will be on board as well as smaller companies with vaccines in development. Uh, the South African president, Cyril Ramaphosa uh, said the hub will make sure that it benefits the entire African continent mm. but he did not say how vaccines uh, how vaccines it makes uh, would be shared with other countries so, I think they also have to address the issue of transportation mm. and also I think storage That's issues right. as well yeah. anyway. uh, and South Africa and India have actually been pushing the World Trade Organization mm. to waive these intellectual property rights for uh, vaccine technology uh, but countries including the US and Britain have blocked such a waiver. Uh, Biden said actually in May that he's supported a waiver, but it is unclear how wide of a waiver the US supports or whether other wealthy countries uh, mm -hmm. will sign on. We remember in the G7 summit recently, the leaders uh, announced they're going to share a billion doses of, um, mm -hmm. uh, of vaccines. So they didn't mention anything about uh, intellectual property right ra waivers. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll see. All right. Thank you very much, Arm, for today's coverage. I'll mm -hmm. see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.